Okay. I'm going to talk to, to you today about using Backbone with PickPHP. Um, about me, I, I'm Richard. I uh, started to know the PickPHP guys in Japan, and the community out there is really, really good. To be honest, I'm a, a Rails guy. I really like Rails. Um, but the Ruby meetups weren't very fun. Um, but the PickPHP guys, they're awesome. So that's a benefit to you guys. I uh, lived in Japan for 15 years, and um, up until Friday I was at BBC. First of all, I want to apologize for the topic of my talk. Um, when I was first looking what to submit, I tried to think of things that people might like to hear. And um, this is the front page of your PigFest website. And look at the slide, backbone.js and pigphp. Sorry. It wasn't exactly an original topic, but it got chosen for some weird reason. Um, <coughs> just to enlarge, um, my talk isn't really um, an advanced talk. It's more like how to get going, how to start using PHP with Backbone. And what I've done is I've kind of made it like a little tutorial. I don't think I'm going to get through all of the stuff. Um, but what I have done is, is um, made a bunch Thank you. So we've been learning and relearning how to do things better in PHP, just like the last talk of how to write better code. And um, JavaScript is having a revolution right now, hugely, um, down to Node or down to all these other various libraries. Um, but we're having a huge revolution in JavaScript, and I think we need to get on board. We've always been using JavaScript as um, PHP guys. Um, to some degree, and we've been trying different styles of implementing it into our frameworks, like JavaScript helpers and all the rest of it. But really, when it comes down to it, we want to get more portable. Um, we don't always want to have everything based on the server. At some point, we want to get our code onto devices. So it's no longer about the computer anymore. It's no longer about the desktop anymore. It's, it's about phones. It's about tablets. It's like um, my wife doesn't have a computer anymore. She only has an iPad. But when you look at JavaScript, um, I think this, I'm going to talk about some of the experiences that we may have had. So this is JavaScript, the definitive guide, and that's JavaScript, the good parts. So, <laughs> which I think is quite ir ironic, but true. Um, JavaScript is an excellent language, and we really need to to get on and use it, but there are frustrations that come along with it. But knowing how to code in it will help a lot. And uh, this is how we may have done JavaScript before in, in our previous projects. It may look a bit like that. You know, even though you've got the cake stuff going, you've got all the MVC stuff going nice, we've taken jQuery, which was you know, it's been the main uh, core JavaScript way of doing things for the last three or four years, and basically done something like that. Or you might look at your code in the morning and see that. Or you might even see something like that. You just don't do it. Don't do that. That's not how you eat a kid. I don't know if that translates into uh, American culture. Well, there's another one. It's 
So our JavaScript can get a bit like that. You know, especially when you get into all the events and stuff. There's events happening here and there and stuff going on all about shop. How are we going to contain this? This is some code I wrote probably about two, two, two and a half years ago. But shit, it's a pile of absolute filler. But we've had that eureka moment with um, MVC and PHP. And I think we are getting to the point where we're starting to have those eureka moments in JavaScript. One of the things is that um, we've often been writing JavaScript very procedurally. Um, but we all know the benefits of object-oriented programming. So it's time to get our JavaScript object-oriented. And um, it's also a good time to start looking at things a bit MVC-ish, especially with our more complex JavaScript implementations. So um, I know the talk of my uh, topic of my talk's backbone, um, but lately Angular has been getting a lot of um, traction as well. So some of you might ask me, what about Angular? I think it's great. Go ahead, do it. I like backbone. Um, we all have a choice. Um, but some of those reasons that I like backbone is it seems to me that it's a good way of getting into good JavaScript techniques and actually understanding what's going on. I think there's a lot more magic that goes on with Angular. And um, I, I like the fact that you've got to be proactive about doing that stuff in Backbone. So this is a, the topic of someone's uh, blog. And I, I completely agree with this. It's made, hi made this guy a better programmer. And then it's this guy says, the more I use Backbone, the more I love it. Probably because the more I use it, the better I get at, r at real JavaScript, not a framework. And I think that's really important for us as developers. So your first stopping point, of course, is um, the Backbone uh, website. And Backbone actually sits on top of a library called underscore. And underscore is like a really good base of like a lot of, um, like JavaScript's no way as complete as PHP is in, in what it offers you on the table as an API. So underscore gives you a lot of the core functionality that you'd often want in JavaScript, like, you know, iterators and things like that. And so it's just a really useful utility library that's bolted on and comes as a set with um, Backbone.js. So Backbone, it gives us a structure to web applications by providing models with key value binding and custom events, collections with a rich API of innumerable functions, views with a declarative event handling and connects it all to your existing API over a RESTful JSON interface. So I don't know, we've been talking about a lot of these themes. But put it down simply, it's just this. What Backbone provides you is a model it provides you with a collection. It provides you with a view and a router layer. Okay, I'm going to go and show you a demo. And this is in my uh, little plugin uh, folder that I showed you. Okay, so you have a simple to-do list. This is the de facto um, backbone starting block demo app. And I've actually translated this into a cake app. Um, so when you download and look at the code, you'll see, oh, th this works how cake would work. I've actually made it a plugin. Um, I'll just show you the code of that in a minute. But at the moment, I'll just show you it working. So um, get up. Get hangover cure for some of you guys. And that all goes in there. And what you will see go 
going on here in the network section is that when I cross that out, it's going to put for me. I know this is really basic stuff for guys who have been doing background, but um, but it's really cool. It's doing some really cool stuff, and I'm doing very little work to actually get this to happen. And if you look at that, it's sending the ID that has already generated, so it, it's holding that instance for you of the ID that it's created. So if I add a item, enter that, what it's done, it's sent a post, and if I look at the response, it's actually made a JSON object and sent that back for me. And it's told me what ID it's using. So I just want to quickly, am I gonna get online okay here? What I've made is a base backbone plugin and inside here I've got a few different files that um, basically make this work a little bit easier. Um, I'm actually using Mark Story's uh, Asset Compress uh, plugin. Uh, I'm also using MongoDB, Ichikawa-san's um, Mongo data source, so I recommend those two plugins to people, really, really solid. And MongoDB, uh, Ichikawa-san, Mr. Ichikawa, he spoke here last year on MongoDB, so um, Mongo's great. Um, I'll just quickly go and show you what's, what was happening there on, in Mongo as well. So you can see those objects that have been created there. And um, every time we go there and delete it, that is actually editing. So that's actually done change that, that first record there, um, where it's done is set to false, it's become done set to true, so it's just toggling that there, um, and if you delete them, you can see there's none there, so it's completely interacting with your database. So Going back to that um, plugin project, there's a readme in there that tells you how to set it up. You need to add this to your um, asset compress.ini. I'd like one one request I have is so that it could actually find this in the plugin folder. Also, what I've done is I, I've put this straight into a plugin. I haven't made this as part of the app. So when you're putting little extra functionality into your apps, make a plugin. If you're going to reuse that in another project, make it a plugin. The plugins in, in Cake are great, and they're so easy to use that there's no reason for you to actually bind that heavily into your app. And what I've made is a little component here, which kind of jigs the output of the JSON so it doesn't have all the model names tagged on it. I know you can deal with that in Backbone, but it's I, I prefer just a really neat output of what the object has returned. So, um, so that's basically what this component does, which isn't a lot. And then it also makes it um, use this JSON 
to your file. So it's just really simple. You don't need this. You don't need this to do what I'm doing, but I found it was a kind of easy way to do. And then I've put all of the libraries that you need to get going, uh, which is jQuery, Backbone, underscore. So if you load this up, put the assets, uh, compress stuff in the right place, and Bob's your uncle. So next, what I'm going to do is look at um, another example. We're going to see what's actually underneath some of these things. Um, so I've made a little another little demo. This might look a bit more like something you're used to seeing in Cake when you set something up. Um, so again, I've put this in a plugin. And this is actually a good way to start organizing some of your code. So here I've got a little cars app, it's tiny. Um, but I looked at a few different people's implementations of how they were putting their JavaScript files together. And it's very easy for stuff to get a, to become a mess. That's why I really like the last talk. I don't, I don't like any more than 12 files in a directory. Any, as soon as you get over 12 files in a directory, it start, you can't really work out what's going on. Um, so here, what I've done is I've, you can see the different sections that we have. And so first of all, there is this model. And the center point of any uh, back home project is the model. And I think it, it's it's kind of like um, in Cake as well. When you start really learning how to use the model well, it is incredibly powerful. So here I've just set it up. I've given it a route. So it follows the Cake Fest cars route. So all of its posts will go to that route. So if it's going to write a put, um, wow, well if it's going to write, say, for example, a post to actually post it, it will do a post to this Cakefest cars. If it does index, it would do a get to Cakefest cars, and that's why um, the rest talk yesterday is a really good base for this. It's just a straight, flat out JSON API. Then I've added some uh, defaults. I do a lot of work with cars and things like that, so I always think in terms of cars, and makers and models and stuff like that. And so we've got the maker default as other, and the model is over other, and we've got a show as true. Then after that, you'll see there's a toggle. So this is a little toggle method that basically toggles the show from true to false and false to true, vice versa. And then we have a clear method that will destroy that. So I can actually go ahead with just this method and start actually interacting with my Rails app. Not Rails. Take app. So first I'm gonna actually do this in the console. And that has created an object. So now I'm going to go and look at that car and I'm going to say get model. As in the car model, not the model model. Um, maybe I should do make it. It's not that. So I can go then and I can say set maker. Um, and say Ferrari. And then when I get the maker, it's Ferrari. Now I 
can go to the database and I can go db dot cars why is there nothing in there? I haven't saved it so I go back and I put car dot save bang and that has done my post the 200 and sent that data. Now if I go and I look in my cars database, I've got the Ferrari. At the moment, um, it's got show as true as a default. I actually haven't wired this up into the uh, into the view or anything yet. So toggling it won't actually change anything but the data. But you will see if I go here and I write car dot toggle and you see actually in the code when I do a toggle I'm actually doing this save and setting the changes that I want to make. So when you actually look at what's happening here, it's done a put. So now when I look at this, it's toggled to show to false. I mean, it's real basic stuff, but I think if any of you remember if you did this in flat um, jQuery, it'd be actually quite a lot of work to get this going. And Backbone is actually providing all of that um, base stuff for you. So that, and that's just the model. Um, but I'm going to actually move on, um, so I don't have a whole lot of time. It's actually quite, quite a deep topic. You could actually talk for quite a while about it. Um, next I'm going to talk about collections. So collections is just like a uh, array list with iterators and things. Um, so if I go to the console here, I have an array list called cars, or a collection called cars, and I've actually put the collection uh, class in its own file. And I've told it the URL I want it to access, and I've told it that the model that I want to bind it to is car. And I've added a little method there, just to say, okay, what does this contain? So a collection, which is very simple, a collection of models. It's probably the easiest to understand, but all I do here, add my car to the collection and you will actually see well it's been added to my list that's jumping a few steps ahead to what the actual view's doing um, but it's doing something and that's good so now if I write cars dot length which is my little helper method there So I can also have other little methods. Actually, the, the backbone documentation is amazing, and it's really clear. And you can see in each one of these sections what helper methods it's giving you and what you can use. And so one of those is cars at, and then the index in that list. And then that will give us the um, the model there. So I can do cars at zero. And then we can write get maker and Ferrari. 
then what I can do is do car clear, which will delete that for me. And because I've bound that to that collection, it disappears from the collection as soon as I delete that car object. So now when I do cars.fetch, gave me an object back, but there wasn't actually anything in it, and it didn't get appended to the list. Um, who remembers larders? They're cool car, aren't they? So if you add that to the list there, when we do cars fetch, it actually fetches that and appends it to the list, which we can look at when we get on to the next section. time now, but I will quickly go over it for you. Um, the views are probably the part of Backbone I enjoy the least. Um, I think models and collections and routers are really nicely separated. Um, it takes a while to get your head around what's going on in the views. And basically because they're doing so much, it's not like a view as in a cake view. A cake view is a template. So we actually tell it what template we want to use. But what we're also doing here is we're, we're binding events to the view. Now the way to look at Backbone and to do it really well and so it doesn't get all out of control really quickly, and I think this is what we do in JavaScript a lot, is we actually focus way too much on the actions and the events where what Backbone does really well is really data-centric actions. So you can actually start saying through these um, view uh, classes, you can say, okay, when this happens to cars, I want to run this method. When a car gets removed, I want to do this. And this is where a lot of this magic stuff happens, it, but it also renders it. So you've got the event bindings, you've got the rendering. Um, it's doing way too much that, than I'd like. Um, but that's why I think it will help that when these get start getting quite um, intense, is to actually start breaking out your views into uh, the individual methods for uh, the individual classes for that view. So for example, in this case, I have a car view, which is actually the row in the table. And I, I, this is really hard to explain in a very small amount of time because it's such a big topic. Um, but then I've got the overall app view, which maybe should be um, car list view, where it's actually um, listening out for the form. And upon that form submit, then it's adding that data. It's creating the, the car object, and it's adding it to the collection. And then what the collection is doing is having its own event saying that a car's been added to that collection. And because the car's been added to that collection, then the, the view that's bound to that collection then knows that that's been changed, and then adds that, that view that it renders that template. So it's quite a convoluted process, but when you get into it, you're, um, you, you, so you soon get used to that. Okay, last of all, I want to look at the router. And um, the router's really useful. Um, I was talking about phone gap projects and stuff yesterday. Um, phone gap and backbone go really nicely together. And um, what you can do with the router, um, if you look at the code here, you basically define the routes and then you tell it what you want it to do based on that route. So this is all really easy to wire up in a web app. It's really easy to wire up into a phone gap app to 
really easy to wire up into a mobile app and get um, different things happening uh, in your single page app based on the route. Um, so here we've got default, so what does the default do? It gets the app and it makes a new app view. Uh, if you look at the test route, it goes to the testing method and it just shows an alert, which um, is pretty meaningless, but it shows that it works. So if I go there, that's my my little route working. And there's also a lot of other methods so that you can easily, um, with using routes, you can easily navigate to these different parts of your, your app. Um, so really, really flexible, really fun, and it's a really, really good way of doing JavaScript. Um, also on my uh, plugins uh, repo that I've got there in GitHub, I also talk about how to, to do that with CoffeeScript. Um, I don't know if any of you use CoffeeScript. Do any of you use CoffeeScript? I'm still in real two minds about CoffeeScript. I kind of like it and its syntax is nice, but at the same time I feel that you need to understand JavaScript. So before you start using CoffeeScript to write your backbone apps, write a few simple apps in JavaScript. Know JavaScript, know the good parts, because actually this is so fun. Doing this kind of dev is a lot of fun. It, it feels really, really loose and flexible and adaptive. And, and when I'm doing JavaScript and I actually get into it, you can really enjoy it a lot. So I recommend jumping in, getting involved with object-oriented JavaScript. Write a few libraries, write a few plugins for your, your cake projects and uh, make some awesome apps. And that's it. Do you have any questions far away? I don't know we're out of time, but... Oh, Backbone Siphon, it, it gets the form. Um, it's really hard to get individual elements from your form and get them in a serialized way. Like jQuery will only give you, the serializer will only give it as like a URL parameterized um, serializing. But J, uh, Backbone Siphon gives it to you as a JavaScript object. So it makes it a lot easier to get data from your forms and put it into Backbone um, models.